let us begin yeah so this is the diagram that we are going to investigate today so the interval 0 1 is clearly an interval in real numbers correct so this inclusion is clear then from real numbers we will give a map using Dedekind cuts to power set of rational numbers but what is power set we saw it in the last lecture it is same as I mean it is in bijection with functions from q to 2 via characteristic functions of subsets uh, so this is same as because we have seen that if a is equi equinumerous with c and b is equinumerous with d then functions from a to b is in uh, is equinumerous with functions from c to d yes so this part also we have done and over here from fun n2 to 0 1 will give the cantor's middle third set argument yes Okay, so this map is if you are given any subset y, where will y go here? It will go to the characteristic function of y and which is a function from rational numbers to 2. How is that function defined? It will send a rational number, uh, let us say x to 1 if x belongs to capital Y and 0 otherwise and in the reverse direction what you do you are given some function from Q to 2 this function we will map it to F inverse of 1 please verify that this is a bijection yeah so, uh, our job today is to finish these two green descriptions. So, real numbers are thought of, I mean real numbers are complicated actually, yeah? even though all of you feel like you know real line, but real numbers are complicated and they were actually introduced to fill up gaps between rational numbers. All of you know that rational numbers are dense given any two different rational numbers there must exist a rational number between them correct so let us write down that property first yeah dense rational numbers rationals are dense linear orders okay so let us quickly recall what linear order means I mean here I am talking about rationals with less than relationship. So first thing is that uh, well what are the properties of this strictly less than relationship? Can an element be related to itself? No. no. So negation of x less than x. Yeah, I mean uh, I can write down if you want I can write down more formally. For all x, negation x less than x. This is the first property. What is the second property? Uh, transitivity holds. If x is less than y and y is less than z, then x is less than z. So, for all x, y, z, uh, x is less than y and y is less than z, then this implies that x is less than z ok so this first property is called irreflexivity yeah this is exactly the opposite of reflexivity reflexivity says that two elements are always like one element is always related to itself irreflexivity says that one element is never related to itself second property is transitivity all of you know this and third property is that for all x and y if x is not equal to y yeah negation x equal to y then this will imply that either x is less than y or y is less than x 
all of you agree with this two numbers are always comparable if they are distinct then they are comparable so actually there are three possibilities first possibility is that two numbers are equal second possibility is that x is less than y and third possibility is y is less than x and therefore there is the right name it's called trichotomy okay trichotomy means three possibilities it's has it has to be one of the three possibilities and finally we have this density property yeah? i'm i'm just going to write it here for all x y uh, if x is less than y then this implies that there exists z such that z is less than uh, z is less than y and x is less than z what i am saying is that given any two real numbers uh, any two rational numbers if this is x and y then there must exist a rational number between them can you tell me how to find such z average average very good so this is called a density property so therefore rationals are dense linear orders linear orders are things uh, which satisfy first three conditions okay 1 2 and 3 and it's more over a strict linear order right strict i'm not writing less equal i'm writing strictly less than so first uh, any set equipped with a binary relation yeah this is a binary relation less than is a subset of cro q cross q which satisfies first three properties is known as a linear strict linear order and if it satisfies all four properties then it is a strict dense linear order <coughs> okay so density is going to play a very important role so we want to talk about real numbers so real numbers are actually completions of rational numbers completions in the sense that they will fill up gaps well for example Uh, give me an example of a re uh, real number that is not rational. Hmm? Root two. Okay. Uh, can you can somebody tell me some decimal values for root two? One point four one four. Okay. This is the first answer where everybody tried to speak. You all like numbers. Yeah. <laughs> okay. One point four one four. So actually, if I take a sequence, one, one point four. 1.41 1.414 and then continue like that it is a sequence of rational numbers does it converge yes or no no i mean yes exactly that's the question yeah where converge where does it converge in rationals no but does it converge in reals yes it will converge to root 2 so actually root 2 is supposed to be there yeah it's a gap which is meant to be filled in correct so actually whatever sequence we are uh, we were talking about that doesn't have to be the only sequence we can have multiple sequences but instead of that what if i uh, so define this f from real numbers to power set of rational uh, sorry power set of rational numbers as this so send a real number to all those rational numbers such that they are less than that real number okay so if we are talking about root 2 then we will map it to all the rational numbers which are smaller than that i mean you can take an inc an increasing monotone increasing sequence in that which converges to real number r so actually this gives us a partition right so this uh, this gives us a partition so f of r disjoint union q minus f of r right q minus f of r you understand 
it is uh, I will write it down. So, this is equal to rational numbers correct. So, this is known as a Dedekind cut. in rationals. I am actually being a little bit sloppy here, yeah, this is not, not all of them are actually Dedekind cuts, but for the purpose of this lecture, let us do this. So, uh, can you describe this set, all those rationals such that what happens? Q than equal to R. Yes, Q greater equal R. So, actually uh, technically Dedekind cut is when uh, q in q such that q bigger than r and q in q such that q is smaller than r, yeah, they will form a partition of rash rationals. Yeah, that is a perfect Dedekind cut. Yeah, but right now I just want to uh, be a bit sloppy. So, this f, f function, what can you say about f? It is mapping a real number to an interval in rationals. What can you say about f? What properties of functions do we study? Injectivity, surjectivity, is this injective? Yes, so f is injective. How do we show that? Suppose, <coughs> R1 is not equal to R2. Well, real numbers are also dense linear orders. So, if R1 is not equal to R2, then either R1 is smaller than R2 or R1 is bigger than R2. Yeah, so without loss of generality, assume R1 is smaller than R2. Okay, now we have to use a stronger property that rationals are dense in real numbers. Rationals are dense in real numbers. How do you prove that? Since rationals are dense this you must have done in your first calculus lecture. Rationals are dense in reals. There is some Q0 in rationals such that R1 is less than Q0 is less than R2. Anybody who can tell me why rationals are dense in reals? Given two real numbers, does there exist a rational number between them? Yes. yes. So, how do you find such a rational number? Do you remember something called the Archimedean property? Okay, so use that to get this. So now, so now note that Q0 belongs to f of R2, but Q0 does not belong to f of R1 because f of R1 is the collection of all rationals which are less than R1. Well, Q0 is bigger than R1, so it is not and Q0 is less than R2, so it belongs to f of R2 and therefore, f of R1 is not equal to f of R2. We started with R1 not equal to R2, we obtained f of R1 not equal to f of R2, which means f is injective. So, via this def uh, construction, we have finished the uh, description of this injective map from real numbers to the power set of rationals. Understood?
right archimedean property you have to figure it out yourself okay so now uh, let's complete the circle so we are at functions from natural numbers to 2 so functions from natural numbers to 2 are what for 0 i assign one natural uh, one element either 0 or 1 for uh, 1 I assign 0 or 1. So, it is nothing but a sequence of zeros and 1s. Yeah? Functions from n to 2 are sequences of zeros and 1s. Okay, let me write that down. If f belongs to functions from n to 2, then f is a sequence, is a binary sequence. Actually, we can work with binary sequences. So, all of you know that every number has a binary expansion as well. Similar to decimal expansion, every number has a binary expansion. But there is a problem. Yeah, if you remember while constructing real numbers with decimal expansions, we ran into some issue, right? 0 0.99999. That is same thing as 0 1.000. So, those two numbers have to be identified. Any sequence, any decimal expansion that ends in a sequence of nines has to be taken back. Yeah, I mean, the, you can truncate it and add 1 to the previous number, correct? So, now, even if we deal with just binary sequences, we are going to run into the same problem. So, for example, 0 0.11111 is same as 1.00000. So, that is a problem. So, we are going to remedy this by not using binary expansions, but by using ternary expansions instead. Yeah, binary and ternary. So, I am just going to write cer certain things down. We do not use binary expansions. Since, 0. Point, let us say 0 1 dot is same as 0. 0.1 in binary. Uh, may, maybe I should write this binary. So, we do not want to run into these problems. So, our remedy is we will use ternary expansions instead. So, what are ternary expansions? What digits can we use? 0, 1, 2. 0, 1, 2 which do not include 1. Okay, so, in ternary expansion also, let me uh, write it. So, in ternary, expansion, what will happen to 0, 0.02 dot? 0 0.1 0, 0, 0. However, because we are blocking the use of 1, now we have an advantage. We do not have to make a choice. We, we are forced to use only this expansion and not that one. <coughs> yeah, imagine any situation where we can only use zeros and twos. If there is a string ending at twos, then the previous digit cannot be two. Yeah, we have chosen the maximal string ending at twos. So, the previous digit has to be 
0. So therefore, when you round it up, that 0 has to become 1, but 1 is not allowed. Okay, so we are being clever here. Yeah, we don't want to run into any problems. And in this way, actually, whatever numbers uh, we can write down, which have ternary expansions, which avoid 1, that will be a 1 to 1 correspondence. Okay, so the real numbers which have ternary expansions, which do not include 1, well, they will have only one ternary such expansion. Okay, I will repeat it and write it down. So, so, so this whenever the uh, one will come, we will replace it by this uh, two. No, no, no. See, that's that's not correct. Whenever one shows up, there can be at most one one. See, we are not allowing something like 0 0.101010. Yeah, that will run into problems. We are not allowed to use 1. I am just saying, whenever your string ends at, whenever your ternary expansion ends in a string of 2s, then you cannot round it up. Yeah, the rounding up effect is gone because then you have to replace that previous 0 by 1 and which we do not want. Okay. So, the uh, real numbers which admit ternary expansions avoiding one have unique such expansion. Okay, uh, let us start with something. I am only going to work with all the ternary expansions. So, let us only work with ternary expansions of the form zero dot a zero a one dot 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 where a n belongs to 0 or 2 for n in omega. Okay, so, what I am fixing is that there is no integer part here. Yeah, the integer is 0. So, we will always land between 0 and 1. Okay, so, let us do some examples. Does 0 have a ternary expansion that avoids 0? What will be the ternary expansion of 0? 0 0.000. 0. 0. 0. Yeah, so definitely 0 is equal to 0. 0.0 dot. Okay, well done. Can 1 have a ternary expansion that avoids 1? Yes, very good. 1 is equal to 0 0.2 and dot. I mean, I, I should write this 3 at the bottom. Can half have a ternary expansion which does not include 1? No. 0 0.5. 5 is not allowed ternary expansion. 0 0.0 2 0 .0? 2 2 2 dot. 0.0 2 2 2 dot. Yeah? yeah. What is this number? Uh, please use geometric series to conclude that this is actually 1 by 3. And the immediate next number than this is actually 0 0.2 in ternary, which happens to be 2 by 3. Okay, so now this is telling us something that 3 is important and we are going to construct this Cantor's middle third set.
Okay, so start with, so this is a recursive definition. So start with A0 equal to the interval 0, 1. And what is my rule? That whenever I see an interval, I will cut out its middle one third open part. So, for example, this is my <coughs> 0, 1. Okay? Then in the next step, I am supposed to cut out this middle one third part. So, this will be my one third, this will be my two third and I am supposed to cut out this open middle part. So, what will be my A1? A1 will be 0 to 1 by 3 union 2 by 3 to 1. Okay, so, now let me draw it again. The middle part is not there, but once again I see an interval, in fact two intervals, 0 to 1 by 3, 2 by 3 to 1, there are two intervals and I should cut out the middle portions of each one of them. So, I should take this and this and I should cut out this part, this and this, I should cut out this part and this will be, what is this number? 1 by 9, this number is 2 by 9, this is 7 by 9 and this is 8 by 9 and I continue this process, yeah, continue <coughs> using recursion and then the cantor set C is defined to be intersection of all A n's. This is the cantor's middle third set. Middle third is the name which is given because we are cutting out middle third. Yeah, you can define different types of Cantor sets, it does not have to be this. This is actually quite an interesting set. Yeah? Of course, who discovered this? Cantor. I yeah, am saying that name so many times. So, uh, this is very interesting. It contains 0, it contains 1. Yeah, however, I cut down things, yeah, it will always contain the end points of the intervals, correct. So, it will contain 0, 1 by 9, 2 by 9, 1 by 3, all these 8 points, it will contain even more, yeah, at every time uh, you are creating some end points. So, those end points will always be there. Well, let us figure out how much length we are cutting down. So, uh, how much length? are we cutting down? At the first step, going, going from A0 to A1, how much length are we cutting down? One, by One third. At the next step, how much length? Two by nine. One okay, so 2 by 3 square. In the, at the next step? 2 square by 3 Right. 2 square? Okay, and please do the sum. One. All of you know how to do series. Make sure this sequence is correct, and it should turn out to be one. So, <coughs> look at what's happening. Yeah, the that we are we started with a in, with an interval of length one, and we are cutting down length one. So, therefore, what remains is also known as Cantor's dust. I mean, essentially nothing is remaining, right? It is like dust. However, we are going to show that it is uncountable. It is not countable dust, it is uncountable dust. Okay, so now I am ready to say what I want to say. Please look at this, yeah, every such number 
every number in the Cantor's middle third set has a binary expansion which does not include 1. As a ternary expansion that does not include 1. So, I am just going to write it down that every R in C has a ternary expansion avoiding 1. And now I should be able to give you a function. So, I start with the function f. Yeah, look at here. Look here. f is a function from natural numbers to 2. I will give you a function. Sir, yes? Sir, but c is just a set of 0 and 1. c is not a set of 0 and 1. c is the uh, zeros and 1s. What, what do you mean? Like we have cut down the whole length. No, we did not. See, the 1 by 3 will always be there in this set. It, it will contain 0. Yeah, no matter which middle third you cut out, which open middle third, 0 will continue to be there. 1 will continue to be there. 1 by 3 will be there. 2 by 3 will be there. 2 by 9, 3, uh, 1 by 9. All of those points will continue to be there. Exactly. That's why I'm calling it a dust. There won't be any interval. Yeah, once you learn major theory, you will see that this is a major zero set. But there are uncountably many points. So every R in C has a ternary expansion that avoids one. And moreover, if R belongs to 0, 1 and has a ternary expansion, avoiding 1, then R belongs to C. So, Cantor's middle third set is precisely the set of all real numbers in interval 0, 1, which have a ternary expansion avoiding 1. And what did we write on the previous slide? That the reals which admit ternary expansions avoiding 1 have unique such expansion. Okay, so, let me uh, finish by saying, so now define a G. Okay, this G is going from functions from n to 2, which means it is a sequence, yeah, sequence of zeros and 1s to real numbers. where I send a function f to f of n divided by 3 to the power n plus 1, multiply this by 2 and then take the sum over all n in omega. Okay. Let us take a pause and understand what this is saying. This is a sequence of zeros and ones. So, if it is 0, then 2 times that will continue to be 0. If it is 1, then twice it will be 2. So, I am simply writing down a sequence of zeros and twos, and the, those are the weights, and I am adding powers of 3. So, this is precisely a point in the Cantor's middle third set. Yeah? So that image of G is precisely C. Okay? Every function, so let me uh, maybe give an example. Yeah? For example, my f is, uh, if f is the sequence uh, 0, 1 and 0, 0, 0. Okay. This is my sequence. What will I map it to? Then g of f will be 
this is my 0th location, this is my 1st location, 3rd location and so on. So, what will it, will this point be G of f? Yes, 2 by? 2 by 9, right? 2 by 9 is a point, I, uh, I hopefully convinced you 2 by 9 is a point in the Cantor set. So, every such f will be mapped to a point in the Cantor set, right? So, this is precisely the image and clearly every such point, yeah, I mean by this statement, so by star, okay, this is my star, by star, G is injective. So, therefore, Cantor dust is an uncountable dust. Yeah, it is a major 0 set, it does not have any length inside it. Understood? This because we are writing down, I mean, see, this is precisely the ternary expansion which cannot use 0 and 1. We are multiplying, we are starting with a binary sequence and we multiplying binary digits with 2 will give you only zeros and 2s. So, therefore, this is precisely the ternary expansion. Yeah, so how do you obtain ternary expansion of a number? If you are given number half, how do you obtain its ternary expansion? Divide or multiply. If I start with half, real number half, then I multiply by 3, then I collect the integer part of that. Then again, whatever is the remainder, I multiply it by 3, again I collect the integer part. Yeah, that is how the process should go. And conversely, given any such expansion, you can simply take this series. You can show this series is convergent, right? <coughs> it is dominated by a geometric series. So, therefore, it is convergent. So, do that. So, in the reverse direction from any such expansion, you get a real number. Okay, so, this is actually a perfect bijection and moreover, we are avoiding our usual glaring problem with expansions that series ending in, in the maximal digit, yeah, the string ending in maximal digit, in this case 2, will always round up to the previous number, like one less, uh, one add, added to the previous number. We do not have that problem here because we are dealing with only zeros and twos. So, that is how smartly we have avoided talking about things which could cause problems. Hopefully, this is clear. Yes. Huh? Two by, nine. two by nine. Just add. This is first location. So this is two times one divided by three to the power one plus one, which is nine. So two by nine and all other numbers are zero. Okay. <coughs> 